District 1, Tim Guffey. Present. District 2, Jason Venable. Present. District 3, Dennis Miller. Present. District 4, Stacey Lowe. Present. Have our invocation by Mr. Porter and our play at the last one. First item is uh, approval of the agenda. We have four items on our agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. I'll so move. Motion, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed say no. We had anybody sign? No public comment, so we'll move on to our uh, discussion items. And the first is the DeKalb Jackson Water Authority, Mr. Tommy Bryant. Yes, uh, what we're proposing to do is merge North Jackson County Water Authority and Sand Mountain Water Authority into the DeKalb Jackson Water Supply District and have one entity instead of three. We've looked at some economic issues on that and it appears we'll have about a $200,000 per year savings to do that instead of doing things in triplicate, we want to do them one time instead of managing three boards out of one office we want to manage one. To do this we've had to have a shared guarantee and S&P sign off on what we're doing as far as our bondholders and things go. That has been done. The rating from S&P went public two Fridays ago. They've actually affirmed our rating to be able to do this and upgraded us from an A minus medium investment grade, meet moderate outlook to an A minus positive outlook. They indicate in their two year review if we maintain level debt service coverage as well as um, reserves that we would probably be upgraded from A minus to A. The bigger entity is just a stronger entity and a better financial entity. It looks better out there when we're doing things that will save our rate payers considerable money in years to come. We'll have to go out and go into debt and finance projects as well as giving us operational efficiencies. What we need from you guys is we need you to amend the articles of incorporation of the Cab Jackson Water Supply District to where the Jackson County Commission will appoint four members to that entity, which will be the sole surviving entity, and the DeKalb County Commission will appoint three members to that entity, which will again replace the Sand Mountain Water Authority and the North Jackson Water Authority. So that's one thing we need. The other thing we need is for you guys to pass a resolution allowing North Jackson County Water Authority to assign the assets of North Jackson County Water Authority to the DeKalb Jackson Water Authority. They the same assets, the same buildings, the same property instead of being owned by North Jackson County Water Authority to be on the DeKalb Jackson Water Authority. The DeKalb County Commission signed these last two resolutions last Tuesday and it's, they have approved it and, and gotten the paperwork back. So this is the remaining item we like being able to merge these boards other than doing a merger certificate that will uh, account for all assets from both authorities to the remaining DeKalb Jackson board. So as far as people in the community, nothing will change as far as their office. And the office will be in the same place. It's the same employees, the same office building, the same equipment. Nothing will change. But instead of having three incorporated boards, we're going to merge it into one incorporated board. That's the only So you don't see any adverse effect on the citizens of the county? I only see The four to three board will be doing um, per capita. Because, yeah. If that subject will change, or will it that stay? Right now, it will stay the same. There's no wording in there that based on if the population were to flip flop it, it would change. If it did, that's something I think would be handled through an amendment to the current documentation. But at this time, it would be years down the road before that, that would come to be. The, uh, the last three pages there, two of those are the ones we need to approve this commission and then of course we have two board appointments that will come up immediately. Right, we need to appoint, we've got a Mr. Ernie Wyatt and a Mr. Glenn Ball whose board appointments come up and they are up this month. So for us to move forward with the merger, we would request that those two individuals be reappointed to the board. They're both good members and we'd like to have them back for this merger process. 
other questions or comments? Uh, I, I don't, uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to look at it. I'll be glad to look at it between now and the meeting next week when we vote on it. But, uh, I, don't know. I don't think there's an issue. John, Mr. Uh, Charles Moon, yeah. the attorney for DeKalb County, has right. looked that over, and that documentation was prepared by Frank McPhillips. Okay. With my Okay, it's the, the exact same resolution that DeKalb County passed is the exact version. Any other questions? If there's no objection, then we can place this, these two items on the uh, meeting agenda next Monday night to proceed. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Next item regarding community safe room, Pancrock Valley Park. We have uh, the uh, Pancrock Agreement by Lehampton Associates where they're just asking for the, the commission to sign off and go ahead to get started on the uh, empty safe room that, they, that uh, FEMA has approved for the, uh, the park over there on back. This, in speaking with uh, Judge Manning, who was uh, the director at that time, the past commission went into agreement with Lehampton to be the consultant for this park. And uh, this was in uh, around August of 2011. And since that time, this park is, at that time, it was just an application along with the other uh, community site frames that had been applied for. Yeah, at that time, it was just a uh, request and a grant. And we have that approved for that. And on a, another item, on the same matter, we just got approved for the uh, the community site frame at Washington Mountain Park at the Higgins you know, last week. So we'll be getting another uh, letter from Higgins and showing this too. What's the cost to the county on this project? The cost to the county is around $23,000 and, and some dollars, not counting any kind. Now, uh, I know the Board of Education has got several of these going on and they uh, are used as much in kind as they can, like site preparation. And in the past, was able to use uh, property as part of the income, but I don't think the state will allow that now. But in, anything that the county can do within will count toward income. The uh, Board of Education has got some of theirs down where their total cost is $25,000 to $10,000. But as it stands right now, if we did put any income in it, it'd be twenty three five something like that. And this is to hold uh, 96 people. And uh, they say this thing should last 30 years. Question? Have we budgeted for the safe room that we're going to do under the next 12 months? At the time this was done, now I don't think it was budgeted because they didn't know whether it was going to be approved or not. They just went into an agreement to apply for the grant. Could we, could we you pull from our capital improvements fund? I think the biggest question, or the question I guess we would, I would have would be, we could use our income labor from public works to help with this project. Do you know anything about these projects or how they work, Mr. Widener, or what we could do from public works? I've heard of them on the committee. It's basically a brief out unit, dome type building that would have to have a pad made for it. And this, they would bring the train and set it on this pad. You know? It's not very good. No. Well, you got power, but very easy. Yeah. Miscellaneous things. If we uh, utilize public works, is this not something that needs to be known prior to bidding this out? These are going to go out to general contractors. It'll be known this. out to uh, contractors, but it's noted in in some of this uh, in some of this paperwork that in kind can be used up to a certain amount. Okay. Like uh, I didn't have an application on this. Lee Ham's got the application, but I've got one like. At uh, one that's very similar to it at Flat Rock School, and, and they were going to try to use in kind all the way down to around five thousand dollars if they could. But they have electricians and backholds and, and so on, where they probably could do more in kind than we could. What uh, who bid who would bid this out? Would it be the county? Or would it be the state? It would be Lee Hampton. He's consultant. He's being paid five percent to do. This. <coughs> so we need to work with them on what we can do. In kind right. Of right. I sit in with Board of Education and that's what they're going to do. They're working with him to see how much in kind that they can do. They're trying to do as much as they can. I'm sure we will do. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, so we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. The one at Pine Rock Valley Park and the one at North Sand Mountain Park. That's the only two that the county is responsible Now, all of them, that's in the Board of Education, was applied to through the county, but we have a memorandum of understanding that the Board of Education be uh, taking care of all the money, all the money. But we have some municipalities that have we also have, applied. We have stayed in some brief port uh, section. I know. I know. They all have, and, and they uh, they have uh, all and Pisco. They have all the Pisco have uh, retained Mr. Hamels to do that. Are they responsible for theirs, or They're is the county responsible, for, responsible for any of that? They're responsible for all that. We did a lot of their work for them, you know, as far as any capital outlay. They have to do it. Are the bids going to be let by the county? Now? I mean, the, the, the bid will be in the name of the county. Yes. But Lee Helms is going to take care of all the paper. Right, yes. We could do this depending upon how much we can do in time. Well, if we if we uh, we should have some roundabout number next week, we can go. We can put it on our agenda for next week. If we're ready to move forward, we can. If not, we can hold off a little longer. Okay. That's so we can always uh, agree to let the bids. You don't have to prove it. Right. Right. If it comes in and there's not enough in kind of work that can be done, and you're concerned about that, you just not approve the bid. But that's the dimensions of the slab we're doing. It's very important. Uh, yeah. 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 This time of year, twenty-three thousand dollars. There's going to be a lot of income. Yeah. 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 Y
any place that we feel like the card can be used and we get it out there for you. The card works like a coupon out of the newspaper to go to the grocery store. You just take it on a sale, you get a discount. If you don't have insurance, you get a discount 100% of the time. It also works sometimes if you have insurance. Um, I don't know if any of you commissioners know Joe Falk, who is a commissioner of Elmo County. Uh, Joe called me one afternoon and told me I could use his story. Uh, he had just gone into Rite Aid Pharmacy with his Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance. And he needed some uh, sinus medication. He had a sinus infection. It was going to cost him a $75 copay. He thought about his Elmore County discount card. He pulled it out and laid it down on the counter and he filled his prescription for $31. So in that particular case, in that store, on that drug, the discount was cheaper than the cutback. Now, the reason for that is there are non-preferred uh, drugs with insurance that have a high cutback. The discount should be less on those drugs. There are also excluded drugs. They're not covered by insurance. You can have insurance, but the drug's not covered. A good example of that's birth control pills. That's discount. Every drug in the uh, national drug formulary is discounted. Uh, so it's discounted even if it's excluded by, by your insurance or non-preferred. So uh, I suggest that all county residents try the card every time they go in. Once it gets put in their pharmacy uh, computer, it's in there. Uh, it's just like, it's handled just like insurance. So it, in that it stays with that resident. Um, we share, there's a dispensing fee that's attached to every prescription that's filled. It doesn't matter whether that prescription is a uh, Blue Cross prescription or United Health Care or cash, Medicaid, Medicare, there's a dispensing fee attached to that prescription. The way Welldine makes their money and the way that they're able to pay me to go out and distribute cards and the way that they share revenue with the county is they share in that dispensing fee. Well, it's a dispensing fee that's charged on a prescription that wouldn't be filled if that resident didn't have a discount card. So that pharmacist picks up a dispensing fee, plus that resident will buy something else while they're in that store. But every prescription is filled, it's averaging a $40 savings per prescription across the board. For every prescription that saves a resident $40, we pay the county a dollar. Um, you want to call Marshall County and see if they're happy, or Morgan County. Those are two that are really uh, experiencing good results in, in North Alabama. Our first county may not remember. The more you can get it in their hands, the more often you can get it out. The only thing that keeps us from being successful is people not using it. And you'd be surprised. We struggle to get one to one and a half percent of the population to use the card. If you will, tell me again how the card would identify me. It doesn't. Okay. So the card, I can give my card to a neighbor? Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, you can do better than that. I'm glad you brought that up. If you've got Aunt Sarah that lives in California, the card works nationwide. It's got your county code on it, so it tracks back to your county. You can send Aunt Sarah a thousand cards and let her give them to all her friends. And as long as somebody will use it, it creates revenue back to your county. And I will mention that there are a couple of counties in South Alabama that have a lot of tourists. And I looked at one of them that had 40% of the usage was out of the state. It was in other states. People come through, pick up the car, and uh, carry it with them and use it because it works everywhere. Does the, does the marketing agreement uh, state the mail order, about the mail order? Anything? You can put that in there if you want to. We don't get the personal information, so we couldn't do it anyway. But uh, there have been a couple of counties. I want to say Houston County was one. They wanted it written in there. Um, we actually met with the uh, Wiregrass Independent Pharmacy Association in the county commission office. We had 35 pharmacists come in, and we explained the program to them. And they said, as long as you'll put that in there, we'll be all for it. So we put that in there. Every time. We're the only discount card. Blue Cross goes at the middle. United Healthcare goes after mail order. We're the only one that does. So we have to explain that to them. If you could include, when you email to uh, Mr. Hodges the mm -hmm. list, if you could include language regarding the uh, no mail, mail, mail order. 
Okay, is it already right fine? Just send you the sure. Houston County. That'd be perfect. I agree. Because <clears throat> that's already got it all in there. And they're, That'd be fine. Their lawyers Approved. figured all that out. Okay, good. Wrote it. Any, any other questions or comments? Uh, if there's no objection, we, we can place this on the agenda for next Monday night. Thanks, sir. All right, we'd love to work with you. Hopefully, we will, and we'll do our best to get it all out to the citizens in any way you can think of that we can help to get that. Okay. Next time on the agenda is facility dude. Uh, you have in your packet a uh, agreement for a utility track group. We've uh, spoken with them several times over the phone and looked at a uh, presentation they had. Basically, what this agreement does is allows us to use their website and put information on fuel usage, uh, electric uh, usage consumption throughout the courthouse and different facilities, and track it over time uh, to help us make better decisions in our in our uh, energy usage. And the cost of this after that first year is $637 a year. Mr. Ford had time to review this for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, so the so basic agreement for that amount, $637 a year for us to They'll train us on the information, of course. They'll give us uh, uh, support after that um, and give us access to the website. So I've mentioned this to some of you, but if you've taken a review of this, if you have any questions now, I can try to answer them. But you said this could be canceled at any time, so if we didn't want to see the savings off of it, you know, the first year's free, so we can cancel it. So we're not out of anything to try it. Right. The, uh, We've, we've got the other group with Amoresco that we're going to, they'll be making a presentation on some savings, but this will kind of be a supplement to kind of follow what they're doing. And I think the benefit of this, if we see it works over the next couple of years, it'll, it'll, like I said, be a supplement to make sure that their numbers match our numbers when we get into those energy saving projects. Any other questions? Concludes the items on our agenda. We'll move on to our reports. Ms. Erickson? And just put in your folders the budgets that we looked at last time. Uh, it's in a different format. It has the original budget, the amended budget, a change uh, column, and then an additional column if uh, anyone should choose to make additional changes to, to the budget. If you take a look at that, if we, if we need to, we can place that on the next work session, or if you're ready, we'll put it on the agenda. Uh, just take a look at that this week and let me know what you feel more comfortable with as far as moving forward with that. Anything else, Ms. Harris? No. Mr. Wagner? Thank you. Uh, I received a copy of the letter maybe this past on Friday, this past week, and uh, it involves uh, the Jackson County and Solid Ways Management Plan. What it is, this all stems from back in 1989, the tax uh, what was called Holly Act. It required all cities and counties every 10 years to, uh, to uh, revise their solid waste management plan. <coughs> this is not just uh, a Jackson County, well, it's all Jackson County, plan, including all municipalities and, uh, and uh, everybody. Uh, what I give you all is the solid waste plan, comprehensive plan from 10 years ago. Our next one is going to be in uh, 2014, the next year. Mr. Ford? I just follow up on what uh, Mr. Wise was saying that uh, solid waste plan is important. Uh, and I would recommend to the commissioners uh, don't, don't just look at it as a matter of course, but really look at this plan, um, see what changes you might want to make to it, because it will be in effect for the next 10 years. It's all about solid waste and solid waste disposal. You said this was the original. Is there one since this one? There was one. Um, it was done about 2001, as I remember. Uh, 2001, 2002. And it was an amendment 